Hello and congratulations. You made it through to the interview stage. Today we're going to talk all about your PhD interview. This is another episode from Think in the Circle. I am Dr. Ioannis Pantelidis. I am Director of Doctoral Studies at University of Brighton. Let me share some hints and tips with you. Number one, preparing for the interview. Now this could be either a funded project interview or it could be a project that you prepared. Hopefully you've seen some of my previous uh, videos and you have a supervisor that is willing to help you and has helped you with your proposal and you watched my video about how to create a really good proposal. So I'll take that as given. The first thing I would do is read my statements out loud and I'm talking about all the statements that I've sent into that doctoral college. If is it your CV, read it out loud. Is it your proposal, read it out loud. Is it a cover letter, read it out loud. Your ears are better listeners than your mind. The more time you can read it out loud, the more you'll start remembering some of the key elements that might end up being part of the questioning methods of the potential supervisors. Number two, know your project inside out. If it is a funded project, know that project inside out, know how others may have researched similar projects. Be ready for any questions around the methods of the project. You need to know everything about it. If you return the project, you have an advantage. Nobody knows your project better than you. So be ready and calm your nerves. How do I calm my nerves? I listen to music. You find your own techniques, but if music is your thing, make sure that just before the interview, you are calm, you have rested, and you're ready to deliver your very best. Number two is the interview. In the interview, what we want to see is motivation. We need to see passion about the project. You need to show your enthusiasm. Now, when we look at your CV, we want to see some continuity. You've probably done an undergraduate and you've done a postgraduate to degree. Is there continuity in what you're trying to research? If there is no continuity and in the undergraduate you studied something like marketing and in your postgraduate you did something uh, like human resources and then you do something completely different for a PhD, be ready to explain the lack of continuity and come up with really good reasons. Think about a vision towards potential contribution. At that stage, you're very early to talk about real contribution, but you must have some idea as to why your project is unique. If it is a funded project, think about how to build up towards a contribution for that particular funded project. Be able to explain your project to your grandma. And I mean, be able to deliver the essence of your project in a simple sentence that anyone could understand. Now, what kind of key questions you should expect? One of the questions I always ask is, why here? Now, if you did study uh, at a postgraduate, don't take it for granted. Maybe you did a postgraduate degree at the same university. They will ask you, why here? And why wouldn't you want to go and have an experience somewhere else? Be ready for some good, solid answers there. Another question could be, why you? Why not anybody else? Play to your strengths at that point. Why are you the better researcher and why are you the better person? Bring in personality characteristics and attributes, but always fall back on your research skills and your passion for that particular project. The next question is probably going to be, why this topic? Why not anything else? Remember what I said about continuity. Build a story. You're the storyteller and you're telling your story. Nobody knows that better than you, so be confident about it. Another question could be, why this particular method? And be ready to defend it. And there's plenty of ways to defend a method. If everybody else has done it, it's a safe method. If nobody else has done it, it's something that could contribute. So play to that. Now, there might be another question about yourself and where you see yourself in five to 10 years. Well, if you're doing a part-time uh, PhD, you could joke, I'll see myself here trying to finish the PhD. No, don't joke. <laughs> they will ask you about 10 years if you're part-time, or they will ask you in five years if you are hoping to be full-time. If you're doing a PhD, 
then chances are they're expecting to hear something about your future career. Make sure that makes sense. If you say that you want to build a store or something that doesn't quite make sense, be ready to explain why a PhD would be important to you for that particular business. They might ask you about your weaknesses at this point and be ready to come up with some weaknesses that maybe you had and you overcame or maybe there are some weaknesses that have nothing to do with the project and that you're working at. You're always working and weaknesses are an okay thing if you have identified them and you're working towards bettering yourself. Now, finally, they might ask you, and most of the supervisory teams or the interview teams will ask you about your questions. Please prepare some questions. Oh, Yanis, what kind of questions could I ask? Ask about training. Do you offer it here? What, what kind of training do you offer? Ask about teaching opportunities. Do you offer such opportunities here? How would I go about it? In which year of the PhD? Ask about conference funding. Even if you're paying for your own PhD and you're paying the fees, maybe there are some funding pots that help you go to conferences. And ask about publications. How do supervision teams work with you to have some publications throughout your PhD? These are just some samples. Remember to look at other videos and different people will give you different advice. But the most important advice of them all is to practice like crazy. Practice makes perfect. Good luck, and I'm sure you're going to do great at that interview. <laughs>